You are now in the realm of enlightenment and transformation as brought to you by Foundational Fridays. And now let us begin. Greetings, everyone. Here we are again. Another Foundational Friday, of course, and I am your host, Yuya Asan Anu, Chief Jagna of the Anu Spiritual Order, Head Instructor of the Sedula House Spiritual Center, where we focus on self-actualizing spirituality, where you come into a space and you claim your own power, claim your own spiritual de destiny and your own soul's right to exist and to be and to be a part of and to be separate from okay the balancing of attachment and detachment but in this session we're not dealing necessarily with the aspects of detachment or attachment but more so uh of perception and of our sensory reality yes we are dealing with the lesser keys of solomon all right and this is an area that um i would say maybe uh on the foundational friday show we haven't tapped into too often i mean there was some references back uh when i did the the show on the genie or the jinn and aladdin and uh i tapped into a bit uh, about solomon and solomon's ring but in this episode, we're going to kind of um, crack open the egg of mysticism. And it really, it, in some instances, it may be an unnecessary uh, egg or shell. Uh, the mysticism that surrounds Solomon's seals and the lesser keys of Solomon. But as usual, and as first, let's get into a bit of housekeeping for the Anu spiritual order. And, you know, I definitely want to congratulate and thank everyone who's joined recently and partnered up we have some really beautiful things occurring right now within the spiritual order and within the movement and we have some really great things on the horizon that i'm not going to speak about yet um not that i'm worried about jinxing it or anything but just you know i like to let things take root first but uh we have some really 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 interesting things that i know you all will want to partake in and you will certainly be excited about uh, and that will be coming uh in in the next couple of months you'll probably hear me start dropping more hints and i'm not talking about phase two of the spiritual training actually something maybe even bigger maybe one could even consider to be bigger than phase two okay but um for those who rsvp'd or who were planning on joining us in rhode island this Saturday, September 8th, uh, that date has now we've postponed it to March 22nd, March 22nd. And we will not only uh, the, the time, the date is different, but we'll be at a different venue now. Uh, we'll be at Mystic or Mother Mystic, which is also in Rhode Island. And that's at 179 Dean Street, Providence, Rhode Island. So same town, 179 Dean Street, Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, we have to move the date back uh, to March 22nd. So it gives some people more time to prepare to go. And, and certainly um, there were many people in the area who were happy about that, who wanted to attend or or I should say more so the businesses who wanted to promote it and put flyers up. And, and when I give them more time to promote and, and get their customers in there. And, you know, there's a lot of people who were excited about being a part of that, whether it be on the back end, you know, be a business or maybe who were down here. You know, when I say down here uh, in the New York area who were unable to make it. So that gives you a little bit more time to make it up there. But that will be March 22nd at Mother Mystic. OK. And Mother Mystic is at 179 Dean Street, Providence, Rhode Island. 179 Dean Street, Providence, Rhode Island. As always, I want you to check out our new Asafo this Sunday at 1 p.m. OK. Uh, we have uh, as you might have heard last Last Sunday, we you got to meet one of our students, uh, Eshu Lokan, and uh, he will be hosting as well as several other students that are now on the roster. Uh, and many of them do have broadcast experience, which is great. Uh, some have more broadcasting experience than I do. So uh, that's also excellent for me to be able to kind of lean back maybe a little bit and uh, enjoy those segments. They've been going masterfully up until this point and i'm very happy about where our new asafo is and of course as promised we are expanding into other shows branching off from our new asafo so that is also in the works so the 2014 financial year 
bring so many great changes and so many great things for us uh, at the Anu. And this is certainly an excellent and wonderful time to to be a part of what we're doing, you know, to contribute, to be a member, to be a student. You know, I, I stress the education first over everything, you know, start there uh, before ritual. <laughs> and uh, I encourage you all to come in uh, again. I want to remind any anyone who may have an interest in being a guest on Anua Safo or who may have any type of questions about the order or, you know, what we do or, you know, how they can contribute or where we'll be next. Even two things I would strongly advise you to do. First thing is to sign up for the newsletter. OK, make sure you sign up for the Anu newsletter and read the newsletter. <laughs> I have people who have been signing up for the newsletter and then they're emailing questions in. And then I say, hey, we, we just spoke about this in the newsletter. And they oh, I didn't even read it. So if you sign up for the newsletter, they're very brief, too, just so you know, because I'm not a big fan of newsletters. I'm not a big fan of just a whole lot of Internet mail. So I only deliver them once a month. So that way they're not you're not a. Uh, overburdened with our new mail and it's just a one pager basically letting you know the shows that are coming for the coming month uh links for the past shows any new announcements any discounts any live events that are going on things like that so you can scan that newsletter and you know like the last thing that I, newsletter i included an article as well so i'll be doing q and a's as well through the newsletter and insights of my own that i feel maybe the greater populace can can benefit from so again you can scan that newsletter in probably about five six minutes all right so make sure you sign up for the newsletter and send your questions into questions at anewnation.org questions at anewnation.org that is where your customer service questions go such as i got a reading from you and my recording doesn't work or i didn't receive my recording yet questions at anewnation.org OK, that's where you will get your help. Questions at a new nation dot org. That's where you, you send in all your customer service inquiries. And even on the sites, we now also have live customer service reps. So if you go to the sites like Sedula House, Arisha Religion, even my site, Haruasan dot com, you see in the lower right hand corner, there's a chat window. Somebody's always there ready to talk to you and help you out with um, whatever it is you may need assistance with. OK. Do not send them to my Facebook account. All right. I don't do customer service. So I don't know where your OB set is. I don't know. Um, I don't know basic basic questions that you're asking me. I'm not touching that as much as you might think I am. I'm dealing with the scholarship and the advancement of, of this movement. So um, customer service is where you want to really focus on especially those who've asked about um advertising space advertising on the shows and the websites which we do if you want a rate list and you want to pack it uh definitely you want to send an email either to questions at our new nation.org or sales at our new nation.org that's s-a-l-e-s at anewnation.org. If you're interested in, um, even if you have a store and you want to carry our, our merchandise or you want to speak to us about doing an event at your store or an event at your location, or you want to know about uh, sponsorship, becoming a sponsor of, of the shows that help this thing move, you know, move forward and expand because I'm all about expansion. If you don't expand, if you don't move, you run the risk of getting swept under. So uh, you want to send the emails to those locations again. Do not send them to me. Do not send them to the location where you got your reading from. That's a general mailbox for readings. OK, so just want to kind of put that out there so people can get the right help. And don't worry, everyone. This will probably be the last Sunday I'm going to talk about. This. I know it seems like every Sunday he talks about where to send customer service calls. Well, would you imagine that still on Sunday night, or I mean Friday night and Saturday dawning, emails still come into the wrong place. Could you imagine? Or people send texts in to the reading line. I give you a line to call in for readings and people text it, you know, after I say, tell them it's not a cell phone line, don't text it. So sometimes you have to say things more than once for people to really understand the uh, seriousness of it. So I am giving that courtesy. I also want to reiterate, too, that those recordings of the readings you get are a courtesy. You're actually required to take notes as you're getting your reading. OK, and if you're getting a reading 
and you're not picking up on everything don't don't be feel too shy to say hold on a second could you slow down or could you repeat what you just said but I usually record the readings and I send them out to people as a courtesy, but it, it, it does take a measure of effort to edit them, to cut them up, to make sure the volume's high enough and everything, especially considering the volume of readings that I do per day. All right. So some people will get a reading Saturday morning and Saturday night. They're like, I didn't get my recording. The recording, you're not obligated. Or we're not obligated to give you a recording. It's a courtesy. Okay. It's customer service <laughs> all right so um for those who haven't gotten where you notice a couple of day delay usually if you haven't gotten your reading like in a couple of days it's because it was an extremely busy um cycle and we're, we're sifting through readings and you know sometimes i'm jam-packed all day doing doing consultations or ritual work for people so that's our our housekeeping you know and um we want to move on to our lesson i'm pretty excited about today's segment because it's a subject again like i said it's often mystified beyond a reasonable point so when you start speaking about it sometimes people get a little spooked out you know or they kind of feel like um it's just beyond them but when we're done today you will know what the lesser keys of solomon are all about you will know what they're all about and you'll be ready to rock You'll be ready to use them and uh, or not use them. It's up to you. You don't need to. OK, uh, but first, let's get into really what this idea, what are the lesser keys of Solomon? Uh, if you listen to the shows that I did, uh, there was two shows in particular where I got into the aspects of the pineal. And one was um, I'll give you the date. Even if you look through the archives, might help you to find it. December 7, 2012, I did a show Master Student and the Jinn. And the uh, subtitle was Genies, Demons or Angels. And then um, December 14th, which was seven days. The next show I did Genie, uh, Solomon, Third Eye, Aladdin, Pineal and the Jinn. OK, so in those two shows, I covered the concept of who Solomon is. All right. So I would urge you all to go back to the archives and as well as who the jinn are and the jinn are germane to this conversation that we're having today about the, the keys of Solomon or what some call the seals of Solomon. OK, so those shows that aired uh, December, early December of 2012, Master Student in the Jinn and the Genie Solomon, Third Eye, Al Aladdin, Pineal and Jinn are the ones you definitely want to to check out. They will help you a lot in understanding this show and understanding what those seals, Solomon, demons are much better. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's multifaceted. And I, I will certainly have to preface the show uh, even more than I've already prefaced it with this disclaimer that I will be teaching a course on on the uh, lesser keys of Solomon as well as the greater keys of, of Solomon. So consider this show to be an introductory uh, experience on what those actual keys are and somewhat how to work with them. But uh, in the course, I'll be going into a more in-depth uh, explanation as to how would one maximize the use of the keys of Solomon or if there's something that we should be afraid of, which is what is commonly taught. But first, I need to explain to you the mindset of those who presented the information uh, in what is known as the lesser key of Solomon. Now, first for you to know, uh, the reference is to the biblical Solomon. OK, Solomon, the king. But at the same time, when you read the lesser key of Solomon, if you have any any kind of understanding or if you're familiar with with the history of the Bible, you'll understand that the timeline is off. So, of course, Solomon is someone we know who lived about 900 years before the supposed Christ or Jesus came to the planet. But in the Lesser Keys of Solomon, when you get into the further study of the various uh, invocations and the evocations that are associated with it, what you'll have there is a um, you'll have references to, to Christ. OK, so in some ways that may not make sense based on the timeline. If we were to look at Solomon and Christ as historical figures, 
if you're looking at them as historical figures, then it's going to get confusing very quick. So once you start tapping into this deeper level of information, the first thing you understand or you you hopefully come to the awareness of is that those characters that were written about in the Bible were historicalized. But initially they were metaphorical and metaphysical and the same goes for every holy book and this is why when you're dealing with the lesser keys of solomon you have references to sufism so you have res references to islam you have res this this hebraic text in there and then there's also what we would call bible scriptures okay because and you'll understand why there is this somewhat of a universe uni universalization of the grammar or what we call the grimoire and I'll explain what that also means. OK, but just so you understand, um, when we're dealing with the lesser keys of Solomon, most of the times this comes into play when we're when we're working what's called ceremonial magic. OK, and sometimes you'll see that magic spelled with a K, M-A-G-I-C-K or M-A-G-I-K. OK, and the K is supposed to represent the true magic or really and as i broke down before uh, i think it was on the thor show when i was breaking down that movie when you see that k like in night it represents the hidden aspect of something okay the unseen so you had night and i g h t which referred to the moors those were the original knights okay and then the k was added to signify the hidden wisdom that they shared now when you're dealing with the wisdom of the knights or the templar knights it ties you right back into freemasonry OK, which ties you right, right back into the Rosicrucian order as what was originally called the Rose Crucian Rose Crucian order. OK, but it ties you back into the Rosicrucian thing. So um, that that idea and those 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 notions that the Moors brought for, brought forth uh, as signified by the K, the hidden or occult information uh, is something that was able to branch out into many different areas of study even into the the cabalistic arcana you know of how the cosmic scope is looked at and the importance that's put on the creation of true ego right the creation of true ego now i know a lot of times when we talk about ego we talk it down we say you know get rid of it <laughs> you know in a, in a nutshell that ego is is your enemy ego is your adversary certainly it certainly is depending on the realm of existence that you are functioning from when you're working with the lesser seals of solomon in effect what you're what you're striving and aiming to do is to create universe and you create the universe by creating an ego you create an ego now remember a lot of times when we speak about ego, we speak about the ego that we we develop and how it, it grows out of control. But we never really say that we created our own ego, but more so the world gave us a certain personality or our ego is a reaction to the things that we have dealt with in the world. And that reaction grows like Frankenstein. It grows out of out of proportion sometimes and we become egomaniacs. But the true essence of magical or, or occult phenomenon is the creation of an ego, the creation of an identity, but an identity that will hold and maintain through lifetimes. It is your own creation. OK, it's very important. I want you guys to, to understand that. Now, the creation of that that ego is what we call um it's, it's a universal creation. OK, so it's what we call the universe because uh, the universe has an has a personality. It has identity. Correct. So we say, I hope the universe gives me this. I hope the universe blesses me. I hope, hope the universe smiles down upon me. We're speaking about an identity. We're speaking about an ego, whether we want to call it a, a cosmic ego, a spiritual ego, a celestial ego, a spiritual ego. We're talking about an ego. And in fact, our perception of the universe is individualized for the person who is the perceiver okay so just like i told you before that man creates god not the other way around okay so man creates the universe or this phenomenon that we know is the universe that we just think is this 
vast emptiness that is suspended in the air or suspended in space or that surrounds us and that nurtures us and covers us this would be uh our understanding of the metaphysical universe of course there is the ordinary universe uh and you know obviously we're dealing with with magic here uh in some senses that idea of the universe is called the akasha Okay, so even though many of us use those two terms, we may not use them interchangeably, but just understand that if you were in another country, maybe if you were dealing with someone who was Hindi, the way we would use universe is how they would use Akasha. Okay, so again, sometimes things get mystified because we're just not so close to them. Okay, but the true root and the true place of the Akasha, the true place of the universe, its seat is actually your first eye okay your first eye your first eye is actually the seed of the universe <laughs> this is where the universe sprouts from now you have the ordinary universe so your understanding of the ordinary universe and your understanding of the ordinary universe uh you know the cosmos springs from your brain right because uh, that's how we process that particular set of information but the phenomenon of the magical or the, or the mystical universe springs from your first eye and the real phenomenon or what we deal with when we're dealing with ceremonial magic when you're dealing with ceremonial magic you're dealing with the manipulation or the cultivation of the five senses okay and it's really it's the five senses and one more <laughs> okay, but you're dealing with the understanding of the five senses and in, in manipulating them in order to cultivate, create and understand your first eye universe or your first eye world. It's a world that you can enter in or you can you can exit however you want to transition or move from it. But that space and that location comes out through ceremony when we're dealing with ceremonial magic which is like dealing with the lesser keys of solomon most of what we see in the western hemisphere when we're dealing with mysticism is cabalistic or it's dealing with the lesser keys of solomon okay but the manipulation of those is what creates that universe and we're going to get right back into this after this break all right so we'll be right back a new nation presents live streaming video where you will receive more lessons and more knowledge on spirituality and metaphysics. Check out A New Nation's live video stream at www.youtube.com forward slash A New Nation and subscribe for the latest videos and information. Once again, the address for live video streaming is www youtube.com forward slash a new nation see you there okay so and we are back and of course we are discussing the concept and the idea of the lesser keys of solomon i am your host yuya asan anu Chief Jagna of the New Spiritual Order, head instructor of the Sadula House Spiritual Center. And where we left off, we were speaking about the phenomenon of the creation of the universe, right? And how that universe, the seat of the universe, we often, or the Akashic realm, we oftentimes picture that realm as being in some, you know, nameless, unfathomable place. Or we just think about this, the sky, the stars, okay, the cosmos, that's the universe, right? Because that's what they tell us. This is the universe. When we learn in school without understanding that the universe, uni, is one. Uh, because based on the, the school definition or the Western education, we would have to come to the understanding that the term should really be omniverse, where, you know, all things are included in it. So why would it be universe? You see? It's because the universe deals with just like the unicorn. It's the one. It's the uni one. The unicorn has what? That horn signifying that I am developed. I have I have first eye uh, intuition. I have first eye cultivation. First eye unleashing. Okay. So the universe really represents you, uni, you expressing yourself through your first eye or what some people call the third eye so i'm going to give you a little quick glossary some people can see why i keep saying first eye uh for those who are not normal listeners of the show 
Okay, so that universe, so the creation of the universe, deals with creation the e creating the ego of the universe. Now, this ties into our lesser keys of Solomon. Our lesser keys of Solomon deal directly with the mind. That's the lesser keys. They deal with mind. Most of the time in Foundational Fridays, you know, we are talking about the power of the soul. Okay, the manifestation, the cultivation and the elevation and healing of soul energy here in the lesser keys of Solomon. We're talking about the mind. Now, this kind of might this might change some of your perceptions, for especially for those of you who have a level of spookism as it revolves around the lesser keys of Solomon. For now, for you to understand that these keys are dealing with the brain. They're not dealing with the soul. They're, they're dealing with spirit, but more so spirits housed in the human mind. This is different. Even though I tell you that Arisha are thought form, they're thought forms, but they also have a cosmic identity. Okay. When we're dealing with the lesser keys of Solomon, we're dealing with entities known as the Goetia. You may have heard that term before Goetia spelled G O E T I A. People will tell you that the Go Goetia are demons. This is not necessarily true. They'll say, well, some are demons and then some are half good, half bad. And some are, are good. Like there's a kind of a, a transitioning place. Uh, that is not necessarily the truth because the Goetia are actually customized depending on the mind that they exist in. Okay. They are customized depending on the mind that they exist in. But let's, let's understand the components of ceremonial magic. In ceremonial magic, you have six components. Okay. And I will tell you that though ceremonial magic is something that I do and have done and teach, teach others, I'm not a huge fan of group ceremonial magic. You know, I, I got some understanding on that some time ago and was able to apply. Well, I got some wisdom on that, some knowledge and was able to apply the wisdom to come to an understanding that ceremonial magic sometimes can be rough if you don't know everyone in the room that you're working with if and if you also don't know their intentions or their vibration in the moment because remember the universe always seeks to balance just like the movie avatar awa does not care about our concerns but awa only sustains the balance okay so it's the same thing when you're dealing with the quote-unquote universe or your first eye it will always seek to balance the energies out so if you have people in a room who are of low vibration and you're, and you're of high vibration your first eye will create a middle point right so everyone can participate that could be problematic now because the, the vibration that you could have had may be ruined by someone in the corner who's a skeptic so uh I just give you that that little bit of uh, insight and possibly warning before you involve yourself in group rituals. But the five first components of ceremonial magic are sight, sound, smell, taste and touch. These are the five components. Now, of course, these are the five senses. So when you start dealing with ceremonial magic, the first thing you're going to deal with is sight. That's when we're dealing with the, the symbols, the lamps, the robes. You know, the images that we'll put up, things like that. The the um, sigils, we'll call them sigils for now, that are drawn on the floor or they may be imprinted in wax. That's another way that the the um, seals or the keys are displayed. They're drawn in, in wax. OK, so there's many different ways. Sometimes they're even drawn uh, with the blood of a kid, a kidney. OK, that's when we get more into our, our Wiccan understandings and also Freemasonry. This is a ritual that they share in common. Okay. Uh, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, the use of kidneys, but, um, so you have sight and then you have sound. The sound would be what the, the chants that you do. Now, when we're working with the lesser keys of Solomon, we're mainly, mainly working with invocation, not evocation. Sometimes we work with evocation, but for the most part, especially when you're coming in, and you're an uninitiated learner, not initiated in the sense that, you know, you went through a research initiation, but you're just new to it. You don't know that much and still trying to work it out and figure it out. You're mainly going to be working with invocation and an invocation means to, to draw something in. OK, whereas the evocation means to bring something forth. OK, that is the difference between to, in, to between invoking something and evoking something. OK, you can draw something in or you could bring something forth. All right. Or something that's already in, you can invoke it by 
drawing it out like here so you can see it in the mirror almost right activity number one for our new spiritual training students right so you're dealing with the chants, the invocations and then you have the sense of taste Taste deals with the things like that you'll, you'll taste. You know, when you're doing a lot of ceremonial magic, you'll be given goblets of drink, things to drink. And it might just be water. It might be a herb, a bitter herb. It might be a sweet herb. You know, it might be a hot herb. You know, sometimes those different senses, the sweet, spicy, hot things are, are given to you bitter so that you can start to put just yourself into a certain place based on what that seal go Asia or key based on where it's going. Or, or where it opens up okay so if you're going into the world in the realm of sweetness then you might have a sacrament of mead or honey wine you know honey beer so it depends but then you also have the sense of smell right and the sense of smell will deal with the incense that you're going to burn uh you're always going to burn some type of incense or have some type of cologne or uh perfume you know, uh, nearby that you use typically sprinkled on the floor. You're not, you know, putting it on your, your hot points and behind your ear and your, your elbows or anything. You're actually putting it on the floor usually or within the air to invoke that sense of smell to again, take your mind to a place where you need it to go. Then you also have, uh, the sense of touch. Okay. And the sense of touch kind of deals with, uh, again, going back to you drawing, those those sigils you touching the lamps you touching the robes you might use a certain material or a wand with certain wood so that kind of almost falls on the site into it to it in a sense as is taught you know but the sixth component which is uh key probably the most important because the sixth one is created by the other five the sixth component component of ceremonial magic is the mind Okay, the sixth component is the mind. And this is where the keys of Solomon come in. Remember, the keys of Solomon, they deal with your mind. They work and they affect components of the mind. Now, those components are called Goetia or spirits. It is understood that within your human brain, spirits reside. Just like within your first eye of your brain or your pineal organ, some people call it the pineal gland, but within your pineal organ, the universe resides and lives and exists and functions and works and creates and orchestrates things in your life. Well, within your brain, you have the Goetia, the spirits, or who we also call the jinn. Okay. And these, the jinn and the Goetia, they're the same entities. All right. And these spirits that resides in that reside in your brains, they have different keys or seals that represent them. OK, and by stimulating the various senses while looking at these seals, you can stimulate or look into the eye of these spirits or of the Goetia. OK, and each name of the Goetia has a certain vibratory frequency and these vibrations are you could consider them. They, they're calculated. OK, and. Remember I said that the vibrations of the names are calculated. That's very important. And each spirit has a different rank, you know, um, and the spirits, they have, you know, one set of Goetia will have control over your brain, just period. You know, it's like general control over the different automatic functions or um, the automatic functions as to how you relate to the unseen world. OK, or what they call in, in Solomon magic, the, the subtle world, subtle world. OK, so you have one set of spirits that's just over that you're understanding your perception of the spirit kingdom or the unseen or the fifth dimension. Then you have another set that deal with the details of the mind. OK, how you analyze, how you diagnose, OK, how you own the things that you perceive by putting them into your own perspective. OK, and then you have um, different portions of the mind that deal with your special your specialties or your talents. And you have another set of spirits that are over that. OK, so now each of these spirits, they have not only perfumes associated with them, they have herbs associated with them, you have colors associated with them. They have these sigils or these keys associated with them and they have names, of course. And when you put the, the letters of their names together, okay, you get a formula. And the, the names were not 
designed based off of a desire to create um, or, or hearing the name and saying, oh, that name must mean this. The names were created off of a desire to create a formula and that formula just to create equate it to this. OK, so you need to understand that those names of these spirits are for even the names of your archangels, Ariel, Uriel, Gabriel, Mikael, Raphael. OK, Domiel, these different names that you have are actually formulas first before their names. A name is a formula. OK, and when you're dealing with the lesser keys of Solomon, these are Kabbalistic formulas, the Kabbalah. All right. Now, uh, just like we got into the understanding of the Tetragrammaton, I did a show on that. I'm sorry, I don't remember <laughs> when the month was, but if you search the archives, you'll find Tetragrammaton. And you can always search the archives on Sadula House or Risha Religion. All the archives are there along with posts explaining that particular show. So I kind of give the notes sometimes a little breakdown or different understanding you know, perspective that students help write or sometimes I write them uh, of the of the, the shows that come up. And just as a side note, any student who's interested in ever writing about their experience, about anything I speak about, whatever, just contact us at questions at a new nation dot org. And you can be uh, hopefully, you know, a, a writer for one of the sites. We're always looking for more perspectives. So please join in, contribute with that. But um. When you're dealing with these lesser keys of Solomon, there's promises that come with them. And these promises are control over factors that affect your mundane or apparent life. OK, one of which one of the key ones is to bring up truths from the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind. OK, that's the first thing that the Goetia promise you to bring up truths. Why? Because the Goetia are the truths of your subconscious mind. So now disclaimer, this is why when you hear people say, oh, you shouldn't mess with that because you you're going to invoke a demon and you're not going to know how to get rid of it. You're not going to know the proper chance to send it back from where it came from. It's going to try to harm you. If you Google, you go into your search and search, let's say lesser keys of Solomon hurt or harm, something like that. You're going to see a bunch of stories like that. OK, but I want you to understand something. The people who are, quote unquote, getting hurt, quote unquote, they're hurting themselves because all they're doing is pulling up things from their own mind. And these these aspects about themselves, they have not been able to handle. That's why the understanding of Solomon, when you go back and listen to those two archive shows, I showed talk, told you about how Solomon was able to control and subdue the Goetia. And it was also said in, in, in the Quran that he subdued the jinn and he, he was able to control them with this ring. OK, and the ring had an insignia on it. Now, it changed over the years. But the most recent representation of that insignia we have is this insignia that we call the Star of Dawood or the Star of David. That is where you have uh, one upright triangle and then one inverted triangle signifying as above, so below. And some of you may remember we were dealing with this with the laws of hermetics. And that's one of the seven laws of hermetics, the law of correspondence as above, so below. Right. So that tells you you are what is beneath you and you are what is what is above you. OK, so if the Goetia reside within your subconscious mind that's you they reside within your mind okay how you control them is not finding yourself within the realm of that trap of polarity or duality duality is a prison duality is not a beautiful thing it's a prison and and truth the duality of of the key or if even the star of Dawood or the duality of the law of correspondence is the trap that the Goetia reside in. You as the Magi, you as the initiate, you as the Awo, you as a spiritual worker, you reside in that circle outside of the triangles. If you ever see the star of Dawood um, displayed, typically you'll see a circle drawn around it. OK, this is an old occult symbol and no comedic <laughs> occult symbol, I might add, because you remember, if we're dealing with the with the laws of hermetics. We're dealing with Hermes, um, tr Hermes, Trimedicus or Trimedicus Hermes is none other than our, our Tehuti. OK, so 
whenever you're dealing with this, you always you don't step inside the triangle. You stay outside of the triangle within that round space where the circle is and the spirits function. Their eye is at the center of that um, of those two triangles the, the or the star that we oftentimes call it. OK, so some of the things that you promise is the truth from the subconscious uh, to be healed of diseases. You'll understand um, the movements the ideologies and the ruminations of your natural environment. This is why it was said that not only could Solomon speak to demons through, through the lesser keys, but he could also speak to animals. Well, one of the things for you to understand is that animals do none other than represent your lower nature. So if you can speak to and understand your cat or your dog, it's only because you're speaking to commanding and understanding that cat, that feline or that canine aspect of yourself, which is allowing you to connect to the animal and know what it wants. OK, so all of this deals with the, sub the submission, the subduing and the conquering of the Goetia. When you start to study, well, why did Solomon in you know entrapment in prison these spirits it will always tell you because of of their pride okay they were so proud that solomon trapped them or they caused some type of havoc some type of damage so they were made to be servants unto him and his ring you always find that it was made of of cop of i'm sorry of brass just like the brass lamp the genie the genie's lamp again go back and listen to that show you'll get a lot from it uh one of the things is also promised i forgot is um riches OK, but I want you to understand something because we're dealing with opening and unlocking the lesser keys of Solomon, which means dealing with the various Goetia through ceremonial magic or just through putting the sigils, the, seal, the seals up somewhere. What you're doing is stimulating portions of your human brain. So when you put the seals up, does it mean that now someone's going to walk up to you and hand you five thousand dollars? No, it means your capacity for understanding how to generate wealth will be increased. Your capacity for understanding yourself, bringing up truths and facts on the subconscious mind will be increased. Just like you'll be healed of diseases. Why? Because your capacity to alchemize the, the things that you're eating and not only the things that you're eating, the things that you're coming in contact with and to eat like you have good sense the capacity will be increased so when you're dealing with the lesser keys of solomon you're actually dealing with the cultivation of your mind which is what you want to do remember we spoke about this last show the mind is the cosmic gateway it can either shut you off from higher awareness or it can open you up to higher awareness now there are several books that speak about the lesser keys of Solomon. I'm not even really going to mention them because, you know, there's, of course, Alistair Crowley's version, but there's many others. And why is that? And it, what you'll notice is that the explanation of the different parts, the, the, it's broken up into five parts. And sometimes if you ever see this term, I've actually seen this term over uh, government buildings like post office. And the term is um, clavicula Salomonis regis. OK, that's Latin. And that actually means the lesser key of Solomon. Clavicula Solomonis Regis. I've actually seen that over a post office before, you know, which gets into what I'm going to speak about next. But um, there are different forms of that book. Why are there are different forms of that book? Because throughout the ages, the mind changes. So as the mind changes, the Jin change or the Goetia change, the Orisha change, they evolve and transform. OK, so the five parts are broken up as this. You have the first part, which deals with what we call the Goetia mainly, and that's the book of the quote unquote evil demons. OK, again, as you know, they are not demons. OK, but that's what they're called. All right. Then you have the second part, which is called just the, like it's usually called the book of spirits. And it, it's called the uh, Dergia Goetia. And that deals with what they call the aerial spirits, aerial spirits, A E. Uh, R-I-A-L Aerial spirits And then you have Which these are spirits that are They're good Because you have It's like you're starting from the bottom And moving up So the, you're on the first book Or the first section of the Goetia You have the bad spirits Quote unquote Then you have the ones who are like mm, they're, they're good and bad Not to be totally trusted Kind of like the, the stories of Jen In the movies Where they, they grant you something But then they kind of trick you At the same time And then you have the third part uh, which is dealing with uh, pretty much the Zodiac. 
And this is called the, the Pauline Ars. Okay, the Pauline Ars. And it's dealing with the planets, the, the zodiac, and the different degrees. If anybody knows anything about astrology, you know, it's it's very mathematical. And you have different degrees within your astrological chart. And those degrees make different influence or have different influences on your chart or on you as a person. Well, there are spirits that live in each degree, as well as, of course, each planet, planet and so forth and so on. And these are the spirits of the Pauline Ars. And then you have the fourth part of the book, which is um, typically called Solomon. Remember Solomon, Sol Oman. Sol Oman is son of man. Sometimes it's also called the Amadel. And that deals with the um, the full circle of the zodiacal aspect, okay? And then you have the fifth book, which is the prayers that the Ascended Solomon, this is called the Ars Nova. The, the Ascended Solomon uh, would, would say, and these prayers were, were, were taught to him by Mikael, the Archangel Mikael, okay? So depending on the translation that you're reading, each book is going to be called something different and it's going to have different focuses and different concentrations, but they all pretty much fall in line with, with what I just shared. You know, um, you have the evil spirits, the half evil, <laughs> evil spirits. Then you have the understanding of, of planetary houses and things like that. You have the 360 degrees of the Zodiac. Then you have um, you have the understanding of the invocations of you know the Ars Nova, which is also called the Ars Notaria, which is also called um, uh, the book, the book of Helisol, the book of Helisol, pronounced uh, I mean spelled H E L I H E L I S O L. Heli, you know, means sun. Soul means sun. So Heli so would be like the book of the twin sun, very similar to the Holy Bible, the Helios Biblios, the little sun books. Okay. Um, and just so you know, the book is not only called the Clavicus, but it's Solomon's Regis or the Lesser Keys of Solomon or the book of the Goetia, but it's sometimes also called the book of the Legematon, the Legemata or the Lem Lemegaton, L-E-M-E-G e-t-o-n i know i'm speaking fast There's a lot i'm putting in and that's why i always advise you to go back to the archives okay but you have these different forms of again goetia i'm not going to go through all the goetia because there's 72 major goetia and within those 72 they have what's called dukes and the dukes are like their servants so the goetia have ranks okay these spirits have ranks so you have like um baal who is also who we know in the Islamic culture to be Balal and the Bible we know to be Baal. Okay? Baal. Ba and Al. Or Ba and El. What is Ba? Ba is the greatest soul, a spirit, and El is God. So Baal is the first king and he, he resides in the in the in the East. Okay? And he has he has several archetypes that are underneath him, you know, more specifically 66. That number six, what is six? Six is the number of man. Okay. And with these seals that you'll create, and you can look up the Lesser Keys of Solomon, you can find them on Google. They're all over. Again, as I'm as you're listening, I advise you to maybe have a couple of seals in front of you so you can get an idea. What you'll find with the seals is that there's always a circle, and then there's always some form of triangular geometry. Okay, because we're dealing with sacred sacred geometry here when we're dealing with the seals. OK, and these different seals open up various gateways and you can invoke them in order to invoke different archetypes. For instance, um, it's another easy one. Oh, an easy invocation would be fur fur. I always remember that when that's 34th uh, Goetia and fur fur. He actually no fur fur. I'm sorry, is the he's the 39th. No, he, he's the 30, 34th. And. He deals with um, kind of coming, you know, to the understanding of coming into the place of being an angel. And he he represents the 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 urge, the urge of attraction that exists that exists between between um, complementary sexes. OK, the urge of attraction. OK, so he's dealing with love, obviously, but you can also use him to control atmospheric things. He deals with lightning, thunder. Uh, storms. So again, this is like a joining of Shango and Oya in this this particular seal, this this thirty uh, fourth seal. Okay, uh, and he has a tail that's made of fire. 
Okay, so now if you understand anything about lightning and even the SS, the Nazis, this was said, lightning was always said to be the tail of Lucifer or, or the image of what he looked like when he was coming down or being cast out and he fell to the earth. It looked like lightning coming from the sky, but it's also said to be the tail of the great dragon. Okay, now the great dragon brings us to a whole nother understanding of what hell actually is, but and and the dragon's children. That's a whole nother one. The dragon and its children, but we'll get into that another time. Um then you also have like the the um it's another easy one, would be like maybe the fifty third Goetia, which I always found interesting because the fifty third Goetia uh is a name that we know as known as Cam. C-A-M, that's the name of that particular spirit, which again is an aspect of your mind. And Cam is considered to be, um, Cam takes the form of a bird when you invoke it. It comes to you and it looks like a bird, um, but then it shapeshifts into a man. And that man is always carrying a sword. Okay, so it's a bird who shapeshifts into a warrior. And you would invoke the idea of man, of, of, of Cam or Cameo sometimes is also the name spelled C-A-M-I-O. You see some of where these words come from that we use. Sometimes we, we don't know where they really come from and what we're invoking in our everyday speech, which I'm going to explain soon. But Cam you would use for for issues in court because he deals with disputes okay but also he deals with uh bringing you a level of understanding okay bringing you a level of understanding and he allows you to speak to animals so you can speak to birds you can speak to dogs and a lot of other uh, creatures especially those who deal with the water when you're dealing with that aspect of cam okay um but he also deals with product predictions and premonitions when you're dealing with Cam. All right. And he has just in him, Cam has 30 other legions of um, archetypes of Goetia that that he rules underneath him. OK, so you see within dealing with the Goetia, you have different um, you have different ranks, you have different authority. But it's something important that I also want to include in this lesson is the fact of this. This this particular fact you're dealing with the seals of Solomon, but many of us don't understand that we confront the seals of Solomon every single day without fail. Every single day without fail, you are looking at a seal of Solomon. How do you know that? Because various corporate entities if not darn near all successful and major ones, especially in the U.S. as well as the U.K., use the seals of Solomon in their logos. They use the seals of Solomon within their logos. So why? Because the seals of Solomon unlock different things in your mind. Well, why would they care about unlocking different things in, in my mind? Right. Because once you unlock different things in a person's mind, then you can control them through that thing, especially if they don't know what was just opened up to or for them. OK, so if I open up your spirit of warfare. But you don't know that it was opened up because I did it in a subversive manner and in a wicked manner. Then in truth, I can now engage your spirit of warfare or now I have it engaged and you don't know who it is, which Goetia, which Orisha, which Jinn is it that someone just unlocked in me? Because you remember, these things get unlocked from the five senses. Yahweh. Remember, I broke down the understanding of dealing with the, the tetragrammaton, which deals with the understanding of your five senses. Well, once you understand that the, the manipulation of the five senses, then you understand a very simple thing. If I can put certain symbols in front of you, especially if I put those symbols in front of you when you're in certain environments, I can unlock the spirits associated with those symbols inside of your mind. Now, does that mean that if you just flash your eyes over them real quick, that they're unlocked? No. But if you notice, when you understand movies when you understand logos pretty much the same symbols are used all over again you can't look at any hollywood produced movie and not see symbols of sun ideology in that movie you're always going to be see sun and triangles left and right well think about what you're seeing when you're seeing a circle and a triangle you're looking at a Goetia symbol. Remember, it's a triangle inside a circle. That is the main symbol of, and they're all just variations of that. The variations of, of the, the upright triangle and the inverted triangle inside of a circle. But 
You also have the symbol, if anyone's familiar with our comedic structure, we have the symbol of Heru. And Heru symbol deals with the um, sun disc, right? You have the sun disc and you have the outstretched outstretched uh, wings on that disc. You'll see that symbol all across the world, uh, not only um, in Persia, but you also see it in, in South America. You see it in Australia. Uh, that symbol is a very common one. OK, this is the sun with the two wings on the side of it. OK, but if anyone has seen the symbol for Bentley lately the logo for bentley is exactly the same thing okay uh for those motorcycle riders out there ride with me check out next time you're riding behind a harley or you're riding with some or you ride a harley harley or you somebody has a harley jacket on look at the harley logo two wings on the side and in the riddle in the middle written in red harley davidson motorcycles okay also the symbol for Aston martin um the symbol for um, uh, Southwest Airlines. There's a bunch of them. Chrysler. Um, that that new little. The, uh, it's not that new anymore. But the co the car. The um, looks like a little beach buggy. The Mini Cooper. The Mini Coop. You know, a little small car. If you look at the logo for it, it also is a sun disc with the wings on the side. You know, so uh, there are various organizations, and I just picked a few. You know that utilize the symbol the, the symbology of Haru. Why? Because they know that you have an affinity towards it, even when you don't know it. Because the the Goetia who are inside of your your mind, they are subject to Haru. Okay, they are subject to Solomon. Solomon, Sol Oman. This is a Christ archetype. Well, wasn't Haru or Horus a Christ archetype? So if I use the symbology of Haru, Horus, or the Christ, or even Shango. I can use that to subdue and control the spirits inside of your brain called the Goetia. Just like if we understand the symbols of Isis, which is basically the symbols of the Vesica Pisces, right? Or what some people call the Vesica Pisces, right? That's the two circles that you put together. And when you look inside of the or the middle of the circle, you'll see what looks to be a womb. OK, but it also represents fish as well. We know Yemoja, Yeye, Momo, Oja. Eja means the mother of the fish, um, but it also represents the vulva. Well, if you look in Catholicism, you see that symbol left and right. But one of the places you see it is on the MasterCard logo, the two circles. You also see it in um, on the Chanel logo. You also see it on the Gucci logo. You also see it on the Dosi Gabbana uh, logo and even cool cigarettes. You'll see that same logo. I had shared that information for someone some years ago for... Um, a website he was putting together and he wanted some information on the cult symbol. So I said, well, here's some basic ones that we look at every day. If you're looking at fashion, there's a lot of symbols. So those, those, the idea of the different sigils, and it's not just in those, the McDonald's logo also uh, resembles one of the Goetia keys, the um, logo for infinity, the scion. Okay. Amico. We have the circle with the torch in the middle. Um, you also have Arm and Hammer, which is another one. Arm and Hammer Baking Soda, or if you use that. Um, another popular, Saturn is another one. You got to look at these symbols. Now that I'm telling you, go look at the logos and you're going to see these are, these are Goetic symbols. Mitsubishi is another popular one. Not only is it the symbol of the triple goddess, but again, within that circle, you have the triangle. OK, you have the triangle. So that's another symbol. Um, there's also even a company called Isis. You even have Shell gas station, right? It's supposed to be a shell, but it's not actually the Shell gas station logo is actually the symbol of a rising sun. OK, uh, Coca-Cola also uses it. America online. I don't know if anybody still uses <laughs> AOL, but that was one of the first things I saw when I saw AOL. Also, uh, CBS uses the eye of Haru. OK, CBS is another one. And it's a bunch. I mean, I, I could go I could do this all day. And the reason I can do this all day is because they're everywhere. Um, when you look at them, you know, and not just even that the formulas that are included with the words. Remember, I spoke about Furfur being a 66 um, or having the legions of 66 and that number 66 being associated. Well, if you look at the, the logo for Walt Disney, which is just Walt Disney written out, that's the logo. If you look at the W. The first loop of the W, and then if you look at the the dot that's over the I, 
And if you look at the loop on the top of the Y, what you see there is 666. OK, uh, but you also have Delta Airlines, OK, which is which is, again, the the triangle logo. OK, uh, and there's a bunch of them when you you um, look at um, uh, Time Warner also uses the eye of Haru uh, Google. You're probably looking at that right now. We'll look down at your Google logo. That is nothing but an eye of Haru. And whenever you see that dot in it and you see that circular motion, you're dealing with one of the, the Goetic seals or one of the keys. That's that movement. If you see a dot with, you know, like the swish or the movement going around, that's a Goetia key. Also, CBS is another one. Even the uh, the logo that Obama used in 2008, the logo that Obama used in 2008. Take a look at it. You're going to see it's actually uh, one of the seals for the Goetia. OK, so again, it's all over. It's all over. I, I, we could do this all day. But um, United Way as well, which is another deep one. United Way also uses a Goetia seal in its logo. But in any event, so what we're speaking about here, obviously we're speaking about the different manifestations of the symbology as they come forth. But not only are we looking at the different manifestations, we're looking at what they are actually affecting. And what these seals are affecting, these seals of Solomon, they are affecting the human brain. They're either opening it up, opening up that brain, or they're closing the brain based on the words, the names like Baal, Agoras, Vasago, Gamian, Marbas, Valafon, uh, Cyril, Gusian, Buir, okay, um, and there's a bunch of them. I, I used to have all of them, all 72 memorized. <laughs> uh, Ippos, Aim, Astaroth, Phonius, uh, Gaap, Asmode, Forfur, Forest, uh, Roum, Fokaloa, Vepir, Uval, Biframs, Vinay, Shax, Balam, Alosis, uh, Cameo, I think I gave you that, Mermus, Mafula, Oriax, Nafula, uh, what's another one? Harures, Kimaris, Andromelius, uh, Dankalion, Sarik, there's a bunch of them. I, you know, I just did an invocation for you. <laughs> But those are just some of the, that's probably, I just named maybe about 30 of them. Okay. But again, remember this, this 72 major Goetia and these constitute the lesser keys of Solomon, right? And these lesser keys of Solomon, they, they work within a magical circle that will usually work. And sometimes we'll just use something basic like a hexagram and the outer points of that hex, the hexagram, because remember the hexagram is dealing with that six point you know, um, triangle, you know, as above, so, so below, we usually will use the terms Adonai and Adonai, as you know, is again, another name for the most high, but it's the invocation of the magician or of the spirit worker when we're dealing with Adonai. Okay. And inside that tetragram, a lot of times we'll also fill in, we'll write, I mean, I'm sorry, of the hexagram, we'll write tetragrammaton, which is really, uh, broken up into five pieces. Te is one, tra, Gram, ma, ton, okay, tetragrammaton, and that's one of the ways that that we work with it. Now, of course, you can do a basic um, hexagram of Solomon, as we call it. Put a circle, write the, um, the, te the the hexagram in bright yellow, bright yellow, okay, and you're gonna write the circle in white, and you could do that on black fabric. And what you could do is just do a basic invocation to the Lord of the world. OK, it's always good if you have a piece of gold or a piece of silver nearby you as well. And this is a very basic invocation. OK, and um, you want to keep some water near you. OK, and, but basically what you're forming is what they call the form of the magic ring. OK, it's the form of the magic ring. I would also advise you to burn camphor at that time. And if you can have some brass near you. That's also excellent if you can have brass near you. OK, and um, a very basic, uh, a very basic um, invocation that you could do. Get yourself some hyssop and you could say, purge me with hyssop. Lord, I shall be clean, be clean. Wash me with hyssop. OK, now some will say I should be whiter than snow. Don't worry about that. I know where you're going with that. Saying I shall be whiter than snow means it will take this will take me to the crown chakra, the snow capped mountain. That's what the reference is. It's not dealing with skin color. OK, so it's not a racist thing. OK, uh, but you can always say um, I invoke the, the, the figures of the mysteries of the holy vesture. I am. I am. 
I am. Say that three times and you can say, um, I will clothe myself with the armor of salvation and the strength of the most high. Anchor, anchor, Amidis, Theodinius, Anitor, that my desire in may be affected through thy strength. O Adonai, unto whom the praise and glory will forever and forever be. Amun. Okay, this is a basic invocation. And remember, this is your first eye, the universe invoking the spirits that live in the subconscious of what the first eye is attached to. Because basically, you are the subconscious of the universe. The pineal is attached to your your active and your in your subconsciousness, your active consciousness and your subconsciousness. When you invoke and tap into this energy of the pineal organ of, of or of Solomon, son of man, the most high, okay, or of Adonai, you are invoking the energy and the spirits of the Goetia. Okay? So don't feel like remember it's an it's an invocation. So it's if in, it's already inside of you. You're not calling upon some spirit that was never here to come harass you. It doesn't work like that. Okay, you're not calling on a spirit to, to come harass you. There's a there's a term that I like to say sometimes, um, especially for my Kabbalistic students. That's a whole nother class. And I and I say, if thou wilt know the invisible, open wide thine eyes on the invisible. Okay, and I'll repeat it. If if thou would know, if thou will know the invisible, open wide thine eyes on the visible. <laughs> okay, and what that actually, what I'm saying there, and it's it's a old. I didn't make it up. That I got that actually from the Zora. The Zora is a book that we read. Um, Z O R A H. Okay, and it's a book of ancient mystery connected with the Kabbalistic mysteries. Okay, the Zora. And um, what it basically is saying is that if you're looking for the invisible esoteric symbols and signs that exist not only within the universe, within society, then you need to learn to start looking at the things that are right in front of your face because that is what society is using. So while you're steady searching for a new seal that you can use to crack, crack open the power of the Goetia, what you should be probably looking at is the logo for Subaru or the logo for Acura or the logo for um, Mazda or the logo for Dodge, the Volvo again, Volva uh, or Citibank or for Fidelity Trust and Savings or for Chevron or for Exxon. OK, all of these companies are actually using Goetic symbols. Because Goetic symbols change over time, just as the Goetia do. Okay, so everything that you're looking for is already right in front of your face, but you have to have the wisdom and the understanding to understand or to know what's in front of you, or it will pass right over you. You won't even, you won't even get it. You won't get it. Just like I know there are many who listen to this show and were hoping that I was giving a bunch of rituals and incantations to invoke the Goetia. No, this is ground one. First, you have to understand what you're invoking and why and what it does. Ground two, three, four, five, six happens in the course that will be offered on Sedula House, the Sedula House website. But you certainly have a solid course now. There is nothing to be afraid of unless mm -hmm, you have things within your mind that you know that you cannot control. If you do not have control over your thoughts, which many of us don't. <laughs> if you do not have control of your thought, which is a sign and a symbol of enlightenment, elevated consciousness is not the ability to observe consciousness. It's the ability to control your conscious thoughts. Very hard. Imagine being able to control every thought that comes into your mind and exits your mind. All right. That's Solomon. That's when you are functioning from the first eye reality, from the pineal, up there with Obatala, no Duduwa, no Rumila, up in that world. Okay? So when you are functioning from that realm, not only can you look at the beauty of your mind and the ugliness of your mind, but then you can also put it back <laughs> in its box using the seal of Sol Solomon. The seal of Solomon. OK, or as above the laws of correspondence, just deal with your basic understanding of the traps of duality. You can trap your own issues within the thought of duality. Right. Because you may I'll give you a basic, ba very basic example, because you remember things transcend lessons. 
we may have an issue that we're concerned about spiritually, which may affect us emotionally. Let's say if you have a child who's very violent, right? And you're concerned, you're afraid that the child is expressed spiritually. Well, the other flip side to that is, well, maybe we have our, our next warrior because we need more warriors. We got too many people walking around here too sissified, afraid to defend and police their own communities. So maybe this child won't have a problem doing what needs to be done. Okay, that's a very simple uh, explanation dealing with emotionalism, but it's dealing with that law of duality. Different ways to look at something now neutralizes the concern or the threat or the spirit of fear. It neutralizes it. Okay, so again, um, I'll be getting into this deeper uh, after a few lessons that will be presented. We're in the process of redesigning the Sedula House website and offering some courses on it. So the courses will actually be soon moving from Udemy and they will be going to Sedula House. OK, so we'll have more control because they'll, they'll be in-house. And um, this is one of the courses that I'll be offering how to actually work with these Goetic sigils and symbols and these incantations and how you can properly become Solomon. So you're dealing with the lesser and greater keys of Solomon because it goes much deeper. It goes further. OK, but that has been our show today. Uh, my people, again, remember, I knew a Safo this Sunday at 1 p.m. Check it out. It promises to be a beautiful show. And until next time, I will see you. I will know you. I will hear you. <laughs> With all five senses, we will connect and join amongst this unified field. Odabo. We thank you for your listening support and urge you to become an active participating member of the Anu community. Therefore, if you would like more information on a new events and offerings, please sign up for our newsletter at anunation.org. That is A-N-U-N-A-T-I-O-N dot org. For all those listening, if you'd like to move closer to the calculations and fundamental understandings of the new order, be sure to pick up the book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. If you desire a spiritual reading to help you map your current spiritual position in the face of the world and learn the greatest pathways for your fortune in this season, or you would like to become a student of the Anu Spiritual Order, you can go to saduluhouse.org. That is S-A-D-U-L-U-H-O-U-S-E dot org. If you would like to sponsor or advertise on this or any of our other broadcasts, please contact us at 1-800-A-NEW-LIVING. That is 1-800-268-548-464. Or email us at questions at anewnation.org. That is the word questions at anewnation.org. For more information about Orisha and Orisha products, you can go to orishareligion.com. That is O-R-I-S-H-A-R-E-L-I-G-I-O-N dot com. A New Nation thanks you for your continued support. Be well.